Hi everyone, it's Mr. Baumgarten here with a video to talk about the idea of pseudocode. Now, if you are in any of my computer science classes, IGCSE or DP, you will have heard me use the phrase pseudocode. So what exactly is it? Pseudocode is not a programming language. It is structured English. The idea behind pseudocode is that it is simply a method of transferring an algorithm from one programmer to another in a way that is neutral to a programming language. So that no matter what programming language I understand and you understand, that we are both able to look at this structured English and be able to make sense of it. So the idea is that it is language neutral and it uses syntax that is clear and unambiguous no matter what language you use. There are a number of different constructs used in programming languages that look different, but the terminology is generally well enough understood that provided you use terms that any other programmer would understand, you're okay. Such as using phrases like loop, while, repeat, if, then, do while. Okay, any of these kinds of things are normal programming terms that a programmer would understand. So I could say, you know, if I've got, I could say if n is larger than zero, set x to the value of 10, for instance. And then I might say end if. Just to be clear, that I'm saying, okay, this is where my if statement ends. So instead of using where one language might use curly braces, okay, so if I was to write this in Java, this could look like right. Whereas if I was to write the same thing in Python, it would just be if n is larger than zero and then a colon and then x equals 10 right and then I just stop the indentation all right same thing two different languages whereas the idea with the pseudocode is that it is language agnostic and note here the use of the little arrow now this is not mandatory but it is what is generally used and you will see this uh, in your textbooks and in some of the uh, work resources that I give you uh, for an assignment operator in pseudocode just to make clear that I am taking the value of 10 and I am putting it into the X the idea of using an arrow to indicate that instead of just using the equal sign is quite commonly used in pseudocode uh, because different languages differentiate between assignment and comparison in different ways Okay, so just to illustrate, if I said if n is equal to 0 right, and then said x is equal to 10, uh, and if, all right, I'm using the same symbol to mean if to compare n to 0 and then to assign 10 to the x. And that is not unambiguous, that is ambiguous. And you want pseudocode to be clear as possible. Right. In uh, some languages, such as uh, Java and also Python in, in this case, uh, we use the double equal sign for a comparison. If n is equal to 10, uh, um, and so you need some way of being able to differentiate between the two. And so you'll commonly see that the equal sign is used, uh, or probably, actually, most programmers pr will probably still write out the double equal sign because then that is well and truly clear that you are talking about a comparison. But for assignment, you will generally see people use the arrow. And that is why, it's just to make it absolutely clear, beyond a shadow of a doubt, we are talking about taking the value here and putting it into the variable there. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. The other thing to keep in mind is depending upon whether you are doing the IGCSE or the diploma, is each course has its own set syntax that they will use to give you questions in. 
and so you need to make sure that you uh, get the relevant uh, syntax outline from me. I've got it on my websites as well. Uh, because that is what they will use to write their exam questions for you. Now, your responses do not have to comply with their syntax, provided your responses are still clear and unambiguous. So, for instance, the diploma course use uppercase names for all of their variables and then lowercase for their constructs, such as the if uh, keyword. Whereas the IGCSE, just to you know, keep things nice and simple, tends to do the reverse. They use uppercase IF. So this, this statement in the IGCSE course would be if N is bigger than zero, uh, and then they actually indent, and, well then they say the word then, X uh, is equal to 10 uh, and end if. Right, so that is what that will look like in the IGCSE, whereas in the diploma course, it would be lowercase if, uppercase N is equal to zero. They don't then indent and put this then word on a new line, they'll just say X, oops, big X equals 10. Uh, and I think they just say N instead of NDF, right? So be prepared that there will be two different syntaxes uh, for you to get used to, especially if you're doing the IGCSE and then you're going to follow on to do the diploma. But really, the whole point is that it's unambiguous. And so if you are used to working with a programming language, you should be able to look at someone else's pseudocode and understand it and interpret it. And so when you are writing questions for me, where you have to write pseudocode, you need to make sure that the pseudocode you write is you are internally consistent and it is unambiguous as to your meaning. And so that anyone, no matter what programming language they understand, can follow it. So that's just a quick primer on what pseudocode is. Next video, I'm gonna get into an example.